The following film is the video portion of an E64 lesson. E64 is the computerized curriculum designed for home schools, Christian schools, family worship, Sunday schools, and church Bible study groups. The software contains many features, including family worship, music, competition builder, computer supervised lesson plans, and more. They took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron in the wilderness, and the children of Israel said to them, We wish that we had died by the hand of Yahweh in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots, when we ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from the sky for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. It shall come to pass on the sixth day that they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Moses and Aaron said to all the children of Israel, At evening then you shall know that Yahweh has brought you out from the land of Egypt, and in the morning then you shall see Yahweh's glory, because he hears your murmuring against Yahweh. Who are we that you murmur against us? Moses said, Now Yahweh shall give you meat to eat in the evening, and in the morning bread to satisfy you, because Yahweh hears your murmurings which you murmur against him. And who are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against Yahweh. Moses said to Aaron, Tell all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before Yahweh, for he has heard your murmurings. As Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, Yahweh's glory appeared in the cloud. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At evening you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am Yahweh your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay around the camp. When the dew that lay had gone, behold, on the surface of the wilderness was a small round thing, small as the frost on the ground. When the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread which Yahweh has given you to eat. This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded. Gather of it every one according to his eating. In Omer, a head according to the number of your persons, you shall take it, every man for those who are in his tent. The children of Israel did so, and gathered some more and some less. When they measured it with an Omer, he who gathered much had nothing over, and he who gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. Moses said to them, Let no one leave of it until morning. Notwithstanding, they didn't listen to Moses, but some of them left it until the morning, and it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was angry with them. They gathered it morning by morning, everyone according to his eating. When the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. He said to them, This is that which Yahweh has spoken. Tomorrow is a solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to Yahweh. Bake that which you want to bake, and boil that which you want to boil. And all that remains over, lay up for yourselves to be kept until the morning. They laid it up until the morning, as Moses asked, and it didn't become foul, neither was there any worm in it. Moses said, Eat that today, for today is a Sabbath to Yahweh. Today you shall not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath. In it there shall be none. On the seventh day some of the people went out to gather, and they found none. Yahweh said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? Behold, because Yahweh has given you the Sabbath, therefore he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Everyone stay in his place. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel called its name manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and its taste was like wafers with honey. Moses said, This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded. Let an omer full of it be kept throughout your generations, that they may see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Moses said to Aaron, Take a pot and put an omer full of manna in it, and lay it up before Yahweh to be kept throughout your generations. As Yahweh commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. The children of Israel ate manna forty years until they came to an inhabited land. They ate the manna until they came to the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is the tenth part of an ephah. The film you have just watched is the video portion of an E64 lesson. E64 is the software curriculum that provides education with a strong biblical worldview. And now, here's Bethany to show you how E64 helps my wife, Jacqueline, 
plan for some special times to focus on important tasks and still manage the children's education. Hi, my name is Bethany, and this is my mother Jacqueline. Tell us what you're doing today, Mom. I'm working in the office today. I have about four hours worth of work to do to finish up our income taxes for the year and get them in the mail. And since the children are a great interruption to that process, making it virtually impossible to finish, Madi is going to be supervising their schoolwork today for me, and they're all forbidden to come in the office. <laughs> <laughs> so the children are on their own. What are they doing? Does today have to be a non-school day? Not at all, because we use E64. Let's start in the den and see what the children are doing. We have three laptop computers set up here in the den. Let's visit with Sutara first. Hi, Sutara. Why don't you tell us what you're working on today? I'm working on E64 math. Wow. So what other things can you do with E64? English, history, science, and Bible studies. That's neat. So how do you know what lesson you're supposed to be working on? I don't have to know. I just log in with my name, and the program goes right to the lesson where I'm supposed to be. And if I stop in the middle of a lesson, when I sign back in, it remembers where I was. That's great. Let's go take a look at what Madison and Gavido are doing. Hi, boys. What are you all working on today? Learning to read. What are you reading about? No, I'm the ark. It's so cool. Look, here's all the animals coming out of the ark. That is cool. Let's go see what Madara is working on. Hi, Madi. I see you're doing your E64 schoolwork. What are you studying? Today I'm learning about how to care for babies and infants. Aw, that sounds so exciting. What else will you do today? Today is Mom's bill paying day, so in addition to my own schoolwork, it's my job to see that the children do their chores and their schoolwork. There are not enough computers for everybody. So while Joshua is doing his E64, I have Yedek working on his chores. After about an hour, I'll have them swap out. I do the same thing with Armand and Sitara. How do you know what each child needs to be working on? Mom has chore cards she makes for each one of the children. So I just have to read their card to know what chores they are supposed to do. And she has already made their lesson plan for E64. So I just follow the lesson plan for each child. The computer keeps track of their schoolwork. All I have to do is make sure they are working and not being idle. How do you do that? That's easy. Watch this. If I press F3, it comes up with a daily record showing everything I've done today, including the times. So from time to time, I just go around, look at the daily record for each of the children. I can see everything he or she has done or not done, as the case may be. Thank you, Madi. Let's go see what's going on in the great room. Here we have Armand. What are you working on today, Armand? Right now I'm working for Wally. Building question sets for just the Bible. Wally makes the videos and I do the question sets. That's interesting. What else will you be doing today? I will have to do my E64 lessons. What kind of lessons? Math, English, history, science, and Bible studies. Thank you so much, Armand. Now let's go see what Wally's doing. Hi, Wally. What are you working on? I'm working on creating the video for the next lesson in Mom's Learning to Read lesson series. Wow. Will you be doing anything else today? Yes, I'm going to be working on my E64 lessons. Thank you, Wally. And now, we see how Jacqueline can keep the children on track with their schoolwork and still have time to get her important paperwork done. The key is the lesson plan feature of E64. Because she has designed lesson plans for each of the children, E64 will provide the instruction with very little intervention needed by a teacher. A third feature is the family worship mode, which is ideal for family worship, school chapel services, family Sunday school classes, or church Bible study groups. Once you set up your lesson plan, this mode offers instruction and catechism one lesson section at a time.
reminds you to do prayer, thanksgiving and praise, Bible memorization, and includes a complete music section with songs and hymns for worship. Each song can be played with or without the vocals. Another E64 feature is the competition mode, where you create a lesson plan and the program randomly selects question sets from the lessons to create a fun and exciting competition, which can be as small as the competition our family does every day in our daily family worship to as large as the Southeast Bible competition we conducted with multiple rounds and prizes, including a new laptop computer and tickets to a major theme park. Another feature is Apples of Gold, a computerized parlor game for more advanced students, where two clue givers devise clues to help their teams come up with a phrase from the Bible. To schedule the homeschool advantage, to come to your church or homeschool conference, and teach your people how to use computer software to build strong biblical households, contact Captain Brett at 678-570-2195 or email terabenth at inbox.com.